Hi everyone, welcome to victoriapiking.com and today I'm here in the, in the most special place in the world with those two guys, so introduce yourself and where am I today? I'm Andre Camo and Chris Roberts and we're in Oakover Inlet right above our oyster farm where basically the two of us are Oakover organic oysters <laughs> beautiful place, amazing oysters, and it's just amazing experience we have here. So let's go and uh, see their beautiful farm, and of course they cooked beautiful gorgeous meal for us, and we will see it in the end of the video. <laughs> so love you all, and come with us. <laughs> ah, talk about the beer Cheers. a little bit. Cheers. This is Sunco's Pale Ale from Townside Brewing, right, made right here in Powell River. Only, only available on the Sunshine Coast. Sure. Can't get it anywhere else. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers if you Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yeah. It was such an amazing visit. We are so grateful for being there. Thank you guys. So these, this tray here has the last year's oyster seed. We haven't gotten our seed uh, this year yet, but uh, when we do get our seed, there are two, two to three millimeters in size. So I don't know if you can see the, the size of the holes in the screen. They're basically just bigger than those. And when we first get the oysters, we'll put about 5,000 on each one of these trays, and then we'll hang them in. We'll do like stacks of 15, and we'll have to, to start with, we'll, we usually get around half a million oysters. So it'll take basically 100 trays to start. And very quickly they you know, multiply in size, and we'll have to grade them quite off, often. And uh, as they grow, we'll put them in, in different trays, like these ones here. This tray here is like four, up to four millimeters in size. So we'll, you know, quickly take, you know, 5,000, it'll be 2,500 on this. Quickly enough, these will get big enough that they can go into these pouches here, which are six millimeters in size. And we'll, by that point, we may put like maybe 500 in each one of those. We also have very similar pouches to these that are nine millimeters, and same thing. Well, you may only really only put in a couple hundred in each one of those. So by the end, we've got we might have like a few thousand of these hanging in the water, or like a thousand trays. So we like you know well over a hundred of these. And uh, so so this get back to these ones here. But this was last year's seed. We, we will get them, we're hoping to get them in June this year, last year, we only got them in July, so they, by the time we put them on the beach, like the biggest ones were basically up to this size, and it was just not quite up to, you know, cocktail oyster size, but we will put them on, on the beach in the fall, right, because rather than leave our equipment out there over the winter, we put them, put all, everything on the beach, because uh, when we get the coldest winters here, the inlet will basically freeze solid, and well, you know, it'd be like a complete coating of ice all over the inlet. And when the ice leaves, it will cause a lot of damage. So we it used to be we'd leave everything out over the winter, but some winters the ice caused so much damage that now we bring everything in by you know by the winter with everything on the beach. So it's like this is as big as it got in the fall before we're done put on the beach. Okay, so the trays that I was showing you earlier, we'll basically hang them off our rafts out there. And uh, so basically they'll be hung all over the outside and the inside of the rafts. So all told, we can have like, probably a couple hundred stacks of things out there. If we, you know, if we actually get the, the million oysters that we buy every year, by the end of summer, all the rafts are pretty much completely full. And uh, yeah, so we, you know, we'll, we'll bring the the, the, the the, the trays and stuff out to our covered roof where we have uh, fresh run, running water and we'll use the fresh water to clean the trays. We also have like a, a big sink that we'll use for, for grading the, the oysters and we'll basically dump those trays into this rectangular grading screen and unfortunately right now it's basically one that you have to shake manually so it's a lot of manual labor. I think other people have these mechanical graders and so forth, but we're not that advanced yet. Very low tech. That's sort of how we like it. Less noise. Don't like noise. 
<laughs> and what about organic? Because I know that organic now in yeah. Canada it's not really valid. Like it's not. It, they, th there is no yet. There is yeah, a process. Yeah, they just came out with the standards last year. Actually, Canada for uh, aquaculture, and we're sort of in the process of of uh, getting approved. And we certainly meet all the uh, the standards, you know, for that. It's like you know, part of it. It's like we we can't have styrofoam on our rafts. They call the rafts or barrels, you know, plastic barrels. The problem with certainly one of the big problem with having styrofoam with ice, it's like they'll get completely destroyed with the ice that might like pop off the odd, odd barrel and stuff like that. But there will be much of a problem. And uh, yeah, so we're, as like I said, we're in the process of getting approved organic. Way to go! I'm all about yeah. organic, so I sure. just want to. Way to go, guys! Yeah. Okay, now talk a little bit about genetically modified oysters and why it's bad for your industry. Okay, and well, why it's good, because maybe there is uh, Yeah, well, the, the oysters that we get, they're called diploid oysters, and they basically, they're, you know, they haven't been modified in any which way. And the oysters can still reproduce naturally. But what, there is a certain strain of oyster seed you can get, which is call, called triploid, and I, there there's a few different ways of, of modifying modifying the oyster and basically what will happen is the they have an extra chromosome and the the female or the females won't or I think it's both the females or the males they, they basically won't reproduce over the summertime so you know how the oysters will normally get spawny in the summer times with the triploid it's called milky happen. I think yeah they get they'll, milky, they'll get milky in it yeah with the, the re main reason for doing or why people want the triploid is that basically they they won't get milky or creamy or spawny but their the seed is quite a bit more expensive and like I said there's you know there has been a bit of modification done and we're not really interested in doing that the funny that we want them to reproduce you know to you know it helps us sustain the wild fishery as well as, you know, we do get a, a tiny bit of the wild set ourselves, you know, so, we, you know, very, very little of our production is actually wild oyster. For the most part, it's just, you know, we buy the seed and that's what we sell, but we'll, we'll have a, a tiny bit of wild setting. Is it different well. kind or all like natural and not natural are, th are the same kind of oysters here? Uh, they're all Pacific oyster, yeah. Yeah, there is like a a wild Olympia oyster, but they're extremely rare. Like we'll, we'll see the odd one on the low rock, you know, very down low. They're, they're extremely rare. I might see one or two a year. You know, I don't really know why they've become so rare, but I don't even know how common they used to be. But now they're all Pacific oyster, basically, like every last one of them. Okay, so this is some of the uh, tiny oyster seed from last year. We put this on the beach in the fall, so like in probably in October, November. And we put them relatively high up on the beach because when they come from the trays, they're very, very fragile. So, and the main reason for putting them up high is that the, there would be like red rock crabs, which tend to be much lower on the beach. And if, if we, if the crabs don't make it up this high. So if we were to put the seed down low, the, what we found in the past is that the red rocks will easily crunch every last one of them. Like so, they so even when we do get oyster seeds, like the, you always try to keep them as single oysters, and if you don't handle them often enough, they will first of all stick to the trays, but they'll also stick to each other, and that's sort of what happens here. It's like you have two oysters stuck together, and what we'll sometimes do is like we'll we'll either steam these to eat ourselves or you can also take like a, you know, a hatchet which I don't have one right now but you can sort of like break them apart to make them single oysters but that's very labor intensive and hard on the wrist and that but then there'll be like two single oysters so that'll be like a you know, medium sized oyster and a large oyster and that's you know why these great piles of oysters are all over the place we'll either like said we'll eat them or someone maybe break them up into singles to, to sell as single oysters because they're they're far more valuable as single oysters than you know we could also send them to a shucking plant but the, the return on from a shucking plant is not very good and we'd rather just try to make them single oysters to sell them that way this is last year's seed it's still very very small this is uh, oysters from several years ago that that's there'll be an extra small and that would be a small oyster three to four inch 
medium oyster 4 to 5, that's a large 5 to 6. Here we get up to lar extra large 6 to 7 inch and that's the biggest size we sell. If an oyster is lucky enough to get beyond that size we'll basically just let it live out its life. We got probably, you know, maybe a hundred of these all over the beach and we'll basically just they'll you know reproduce naturally they'll help with, with wild uh, repopulation and uh, I said if they're lucky enough to get past being sold after being so many years old then good for them <laughs> and there is seal watching us yeah this is sea asparagus it's a succulent that grows along the shore here and you can eat it it's, it's very salty and crunchy and tasty and it can be pickled or eaten raw in salads or steamed and eaten. It's and, it's, and it looks like this. And it looks like this. Basically by the end of the summer all this old foliage will be, um, nature will prune it back and it'll grow out and it kind of looks like asparagus the way it grows. Delicious. So all of us decided to kill it for the dinner tonight, and it was very, very, very good. What are we going to eat today? We are going to eat oyster Rockefeller with a Persian rice yes, pilaf. Do. do you like root beer? I'm the luckiest yeah. girl alive. Yeah. Is this uh, spinach? Spinach, yeah. onion, and onion, and this. Sea asparagus. He said he's never tried root beer before. Oh. Do you want to try root beer? <laughs> yes, you, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, sure. It smells amazing. Can you hear? Like, just you have to understand. <laughs> and the house is absolutely no. magnificent. So, I'm not even sure what there is for you. Yeah. I steam chuck the oysters and then brine them in a mixture of uh, ketchup mayonnaise, honey, uh, brown sugar, salt, orange, uh, peel and juice, and grand marinade. And then you're smoking them? Yeah, basically I brine them for 12 hours and then I smoke them for full. Cool. And, I, and we are lucky enough to eat them. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, like I said, I've been doing different things with them, but um, I've been mixing a bit of honey or more ketchup mayonnaise and uh, a little bit of garlic. Um, we love but, garlic but around they're, here. But they're good, they're good just like they are. Mm -hmm. put it in this. this is how it looks. And I need to try one. Sorry. This is amazing with the beer. Local beer. Mmm. Oh, did you get the orange or is it? The, this one. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I get the orange for sure. Yeah. Cheers. Okay, to suck a small oyster, you want to suck it from the hinge. So that's the, uh, the hinge end, like the sort of the pointy end of the oyster. You put the, the knife in right in the hinge and you sort of gently sort of apply a little bit of pressure and sort of twist it a little bit so there you can see just by you sort of got, got it started opening anyway and now what you want to do is there's a muscle sort of like on the right side here that you have to get to so you know because you sort of tried it open you can then sort of slide the knife over to where the muscle is and you you sort of follow the, the top the top of the shell but just on the inside so then you, you want to cut the muscle off or cut, cut the top hinge off by just cutting right through the, the muscle so then you sort of then you can get at the rest of the oyster. Now you also have to basically loose, loosen up the oyster so you have to get the, the knife under the oyster and likewise cut, cut through the very same muscle so then the, the oyster is like nice and loose and ready to come out and then you sort of make sure there's no, no any shell bits or anything like that and uh, so we say that's ready to go. Ready to eat. That's, that's the, the, how you do it. And that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright. I love it. <laughs>
I'm successfully opened my first oyster. Oh -ho. This is onion and garlic and uh, spinach. Yes. In lots of butter. In plenty of butter. Yeah. Butter is always good. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really yeah right. You can't get wrong with butter. Excuse me. No. I'm butter kind of girl. Yeah. Yeah, we're butter people. And this is breadcrumbs. It should have been shallots, but we live in the bush and forgot I forgot to buy shallots. So, sorry about that. It's okay, we will survive yeah. with the yeah. onion. <laughs> Trust me. I always substitute everything. Yeah, it's yeah. My show calls easy recipes with a twist. With a twist. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's. Yeah. Uh, the recipe calls for shallot, so you're supposed to fry it with the spinach, but I'm frying it a little bit beforehand just to soften it up a bit. It's okay. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. And then you're mixing it with the... Um, no, that will go on top. I, I'm going to mix ah. some uh, cheese with that and salt and pepper, and that will be the topping. Oh, cool. So this is going to cook down a little bit, and then we're going to deglaze with pinot to give it uh, a lovely licorice flavor. And I know you are really, really jealous right now because <laughs> everything we are going to eat, so way to go. Mm. Thank you, guys. This is how Oysters Rockefeller looks after they are cooked and they are amazing. And it was just divine. The food was so amazing. Yum, yum, yum. And this is more food for us. Is it raw oyster? Yeah. Do you like your raw oysters? Yeah. Yum. Yum yum? Good. Yes, Ariel. So what you're eating now? Same. It's oysters, but small. Is it good? You like it? Mm -hmm. Very much? Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Here is a lot of oil, a lot of uh, butter, and we're adding those inside. And I think we're pretty much done. You can add a little bit of uh, garlic inside if you like, but we're good to go. No salt, please, they're very salty. As you see, I've added a little bit of garlic, about garlic clove, and about a minute or so in the oil and take them out, and they're just amazing, very simple to make. The food was amazing, as fresh as it can be, as you see. Those were the best oysters that I have ever tried in my life, and they're just amazing. The smoked oysters, or any oysters, were just superb. It was taffy sauce on top of a rhubarb pie. Very good. By the way, they have even a beer made out of oysters, as you see here. Amazing! And they were gracious enough to give a couple of those bags to Art to take home. Such an amazing people. So, you know, I hope you enjoyed the visit. And I was absolutely ecstatic to be here, and it was absolutely amazing. And don't forget to subscribe, write me a comment, thumbs up me, eat more oysters. What do you think? Everyone needs to Good eat idea. more. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Good Great idea. <laughs> yeah. And see you next time. Love you all. Bye. Bye.